Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May 2022 SPIF District rollout. We'll be getting started in just a minute. As a reminder for everybody participating on the call today, you will be receiving an email with this, a copy of this presentation, and you can also rewatch this video presentation on DPD's YouTube page. Additionally, if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to enter them into the Q&A box and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. But feel free to use the Q&A box throughout to submit your questions. We're gonna give uh, everybody another 30 seconds or so to join. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Kim Brisky. I am with Summer Corps. We are the administrator of the SPIF program on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Just again, as a reminder, if you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A chat box and we will answer them at the end. At this time, I'd like to recognize Nora Curry with the Department of Planning and Development to kick us off. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Nora Curry. As Kim said, I'm the SPIF Program Director for the Chicago City of Chicago Department of Planning and Development, or DPD. And um, we think we're glad to have you here today. Um, you'll be hearing mostly from Summer Court today, and they're contracted with us to administer the SPIF program, and they will be dealing with you as the applicant day to day uh, from here on out. The Small Business Improvement Fund, known as SPIF provides grants to small businesses and property owners to make needed improvements to their property. And um, at the beginning of 2021, we implemented exciting new enhancements to the program, including a robust three-year funding plan. And we're right in the middle of that. It's the largest in our 20-year history of the program at $60 million in 60 tax increment financing districts across the city of Chicago. Um, it's been very successful. We've seen a great response to it. and um, one of the reasons we think we're seeing a great response is some improvements that we've made to the program, including increasing our grant amounts. Now commercial properties are able to apply for up to $150,000 in grants, up from 100,000. Industrial properties, uh, their grants have increased to, from 150 to 250,000. And you can also um, get reimbursed up to 90% of your eligible project costs. Um, there are a number of other things we're doing to help the project move along, including um, additional technical assistance. So we really do encourage you um, throughout this to ask your questions today and continue to work with us um, in the future of the application process to make sure, um, because we want to make sure that your project is a success. I'm going to stop talking, hand it over to Sylvia Orozco from Summer Corps, who will outline the program and uh, as she moves forward with the overview. So. On to Sylvia Orozco. Thank you very much, Nora. Again, my name is Sylvia Orozco. I am the director of the Small Business Improvement Fund program here at Summer Corps. Summer Corps is contracted with the city to administer the program. So we've assisted hundreds of existing businesses, landlords, and also startups throughout the years. Summer Corps is a not for profit. We also administer the small business lender. We are offering SBA 504 loans. We administer the SPIF program as well as the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund program. Now in its 22nd year, SPIF is one of the longest running and most successful City of Chicago grant programs. We've helped retain and expand businesses in nearly every neighborhood of the city. We've also dispersed over five, $105 million in grants to over 1,500 businesses. Please be advised that this is a non-residential program Grants cannot be used for capital or operating costs. They are specifically for infrastructure repairs. Now, thank you again for joining us today and we'll get started with the presentation. Today's guideposts, we will go over what is SPIF, what is our program mission, what are the grant parameters, <clears throat> excuse me, getting started. 
Is your business or property in a SPIF district? Which SPIF districts are open or on deck? What are the SPIF program rules? How do I apply and what is the program timeline? What resources are available to help? We will also discuss the May 22 rollout, as well as provide a sample project. We'll provide SPIF facts, as well as a question and answer session at the end. Launched in 1999, the City of Chicago Small Business Improvement Fund program promotes economic development by providing small businesses and landlords with reimbursable grants or permanent building improvement costs. Residential projects are not eligible. FIF uses local tax increment financing revenue to reimburse grantees for the pre-approved repair or rehab of their business facilities or adjacent land acquisition. Summer Corps is a program administrator contracted by the city's Department of Planning and Development. Eligible applicants. Properties must be within a TIP district where SPIF funds, <clears throat> excuse me, are available and the SPIF is authorized to accept applications. Landlords of commercial or industrial properties are eligible for SPIF, as well as business owners of commercial or industrial who either own or lease their places of business. Tenants with prior written approval from the property owners, as well as startups, they may apply with a business plan and they must have a current City of Chicago business license prior to final disbursement. The eligibility limits for commercial tenants or owner occupied on average must have $9 million or less in gross sales per year in order to be determined that you are eligible for the program. Landlords of commercial or industrial properties must have less than $9 million cumulative cumulative between all owners, $9 million or less in net worth, and each individual's max can reach up to $500,000 in liquid assets in order to be eligible for the program. Industrial tenants or owner occupied, we ask that you have either 200 or fewer full-time employees in order to be determined as a small business. All owner-occupied properties are subject to both tenant and landlord requirements. The maximum grant allowed under the SPIF program is $250,000 max per industrial property, $150,000 maximum per single owner or tenant of a commercial property or a landlord. $250,000 max may be granted per multiple owner or tenant of a commercial property with a maximum of $75,000 of assistance provided to each tenant or the landlord. Applicants may receive one or more grants up to their maximum program assistance. Once this maximum is reached, the applicant will need to wait three years to reapply. Percentages of eligible projects that can be reimbursed for commercial businesses if your sales or net worth fall between zero to three million, you'd qualify for 90% reimbursement of eligible cost. If sales or net worth are between six, to, I'm sorry, between three to six million dollars, you'd be eligible for 60% reimbursement. And sales or net worth between six to nine million dollars, you'd be eligible for 30% reimbursement. All industrial projects will be eligible for 50% reimbursement of eligible project cost. Here we have a sample of a grant calculation. So let's say that Grace submits an application for a SPIF grant in an open district with the total eligible project cost of $100,000. She's proposing to make permanent building improvements to her existing retail shop for which she is a tenant. Grace has been in business for five years. Over the last three years, her gross sales averaged $1.5 million. Here we have a breakdown of eligible costs as follows. Total eligible project costs are at 100,000. As a commercial tenant, she is under $3 million, so she would qualify for 90% reimbursement. The city's responsibility would be at 90% at 90,000, and the applicant's responsibility would be at 10% at $10,000.
is your business or property in this fifth district? In order to determine whether or not your property qualifies for the program, you can visit our website at summercorecom slash SBIF to see if your property is in this fifth district. Once you get to this page, you can click here on number one, and that will take you to the next page. Here we have a new SPIF locator tool. You can simply enter your address there, click the search button, and it will give you detailed information that pertains specifically to your property. So it will tell you whether or not it's in a TIF district, the name of the TIF district. It will give you detailed information as to when the application acceptance period will open for that area, as well as local delegate agents. Eligible SPIF districts in Chicago span neighborhoods on the north, south, and west sides. Each month marks a new 30-day period in which SPIF districts with available funds open for applications. Notice of the district openings are provided to the relevant aldermen posted on DPD and Summer Corps websites and included in the SPIF grant. So once you get to this page here, you can click on number two, which will take you to the calendar you can review the list of TIF districts to see when your area opens. What business and organization types are ineligible to apply? So here we have a list that's not all comprehensive, but some of the business types that do not qualify for SPIF include chain and franchise businesses, bank branches, currency exchange, liquor stores, nightclubs, adult use, places of worship, these types of businesses do not qualify for this fifth program. What improvement costs are eligible for SPIF? Some of the items that we cover include roofing and facade, components of signs or awnings, which are permanently affixed to the building, alterations or structures needed for ADA compliance, <clears throat> excuse me, including railings or ramps, HVAC and other mechanical systems, plumbing and electrical work, certain project related architectural and construction management fees that are related to the project, certain environmental remediation measures, permanent interior renovations, including fixtures, and the purchase of adjacent lot parcels for purposes of expansion or parking. This list is not comprehensive, <clears throat> excuse me, but if you have something in mind, you're not sure if we can cover it, please reach out and we'll provide more detailed information on eligibility. What improvement costs are ineligible for SPIT? Some of the items that we do not cover include new construction, whether it's an addition or an expansion or build outs from the ground up. Standalone minor repairs or cosmetic improvements are not eligible. We can cover these items if they're part of a larger project. Equipment related expenses, including kitchen appliances, computers, office furniture, something that can easily be taken out will not be eligible for reimbursement. Planters surrounding or affixed to the building, outdoor dining or drinking areas, including roof decks, beer gardens, patios, balconies, awnings, porches, or decks. Fencings, including pergolas, trestles, arbors, those types of things are not eligible, along with parking lot construction or repair, landscaping, and work on the interior of residential units is not SPIF eligible. What are the design requirements? In order to receive funding, projects must conform to the design requirements, including meeting DPD's guidelines. Projects shall also comply with design guidelines and additional neighborhood requirements as described in the guidelines, style guides, community plans, and other planning documents that are associated with the TIF area and neighborhood in which the property is located. Applicants are strongly advised to consult with Summer Corps and design professionals on design requirements and guidelines before drawing up plans for work. All applicants for commercial properties who are approved for a grant of 25,000 or greater shall be required to make at least one exterior improvement using at least 10% of the maximum amount of their approved grants. 
including but not limited to facade repair, windows and doors, and other exterior improvements that are eligible subject to DPD's approval. This requirement can be waived at DPD's sole discretion if the applicant can demonstrate to DPD's satisfaction that no exterior improvements are needed because improvements have been recently completed or the exterior features of the building have been well maintained and are consistent with DPD's design guidelines. What measures are in place to ensure applicants are in compliance with program rules? Checks will be performed on all applicants prior to funding to ensure that they are not indebted to the city. They are current on property taxes and complying with child support laws. Each applicant will sign an economic disclosure affidavit. Grantees will be required to sign an affidavit certifying that they will not relocate out of the TIF district or sell the business within a three-year period following disbursement of funds. In cases of SPIF reimbursement for land purchase, proof of land ownership will be required before the reimbursement may be made. How do I apply? You can download a copy of the application on our website at summercorecom slash spiff. To apply, you must complete the application and email it to our general inbox at spiff at summercorecom within the designated open acceptance period. What is this SPIF program timeline? So once we actually reach the point where we're able to move forward with the application, the applicant will have 20 days to supply any missing information to complete their application. Once the first step is satisfied and you're deemed eligible, you will then have 120 days in the second stage to submit your plans, bids, and specifications, and all debts must be cured at this time. Please note that stage one and two must be completed before final review and project approval by DPD. If approved, you will receive your conditional commitment letter signaling that you are able to begin construction. Project construction phase in stage three, you will be granted up to 10 months for construction completion. Within, those 100, within the 10 months, you'd have to submit proof of permits or permit application that is concurrent with the 10 month construction phase must be submitted within 120 days following the date of the commitment letter. The applicant must also provide proof of sufficient funds to complete the project. Again, you'd have up to 20, 120 days following the date of the commitment letter to submit these items. The applicant must prove that they currently have sufficient equity to complete the project at least 50% of the funds needed to cover the total project cost. And in stage four, once the project is complete and we receive all payment documentation, the processing usually takes about four to six weeks for you to have your reimbursement in hand. Unless DPD has granted an extension of time, applicants who do not complete each stage within the required phase time limit will be disqualified. A maximum of two extensions may be granted with DPD's approval in the case of unavoidable delay due to extraordinary circumstances. DPD, not Summer Corps, also may on a case-by-case -case basis grant a grant-eligible application an additional amount of time to complete any program requirements. In such case, DPD shall have discretion to determine the appropriate length of the extension. What is required to deem a project completed and receive grant funds? We must receive proof of payment documentation, which includes a copy of a sworn statement, invoices, canceled checks, and final waivers of lane from the contractors. Some report will complete a final site visit to verify that the work has been completed, and also a permit for the approved work will be required. Once this information is reviewed and approved, within four to six weeks, the grant payment will be made via check. What resources are available to help? Again, you can visit our website to access resources to support your SPIF projects. 
Here we have a list of lenders that are familiar with our program. They are more inclined to lend based off of the SPIF grants. So we can actually sign a bank assignment with the bank stating that the proceeds of the grant go directly to the bank so that they can provide the upfront financing. So once the grant funds are available, those grant funds will go directly to your lender and the applicant will then be responsible for paying off the remainder of the loan. Also here we have technical assistance providers, various small business resources, as well as a list of contractors that have been used by previous BIF applicants. Get to know your local delegate agency. These organizations are assigned to assist small business owners in the SPIF districts that are opening this month. So here we have 51st and Archer TIF, local delegate agencies, Avalon Park and South Shore TIF. So if you're unfamiliar with these organizations, please reach out to them. They are local to you. If you have issues, technical difficulties, questions, they're assigned to assist throughout this process. So please feel free to reach out. Here we have the rollout information for May 2022. We are currently accepting applications through May 31st at 5 p.m. May 31st at 5 p.m. is the strict deadline. Please make sure that you get your application submitted well before the deadline date. The districts that we're currently accepting applications for include 51st and Archer, Avalon and South Shore, Inglewood Neighborhood, and Lawrence and Broadway TIP. Again, the applications must be submitted via email to our general SPIF inbox at spiff at summercore.com. Please allow two business days for Summercore to confirm receipt of your application via an email response. If you do not receive an email confirmation within this time, please send a follow-up message or call our main line at 312-360-3300. Applicants are responsible for making sure submissions are received within the open acceptance period. Again, the deadline is May 31st at 5 p.m. Here we have M Rice and Beyond. This is a project that was completed in the Lawrence and Broadway TIF at 4949 North Broadway. So their work summary included demolishing the existing storefront system, furnishing and installing the new storefront frames and glass, rebuilding the storefront wall to accommodate the new storefront openings, removal and replacement of a ventilation hood in the kitchen, HVAC system along with associated ductwork, and replacement of the water heater. What additional documents should you have on hand to submit along with this BIF application? Now, while it's not required when submitting the initial application form, please note that these items are required to complete the SPIF application process. The required documentations vary depending on applicant type, but you can you know, take a look at this list, see what we need. A lot of these items you will have on hand and some of them will be provided by Summer Corps for your completion. What are the financial requirements to participate in the SPIF program? The SPIF program is a reimbursable grant, so projects participants should be prepared with financing to support the permanent building improvements. Proof of financing is not required until stage three, but applicants are encouraged to contact their business lender or reach out to one of their lenders that are listed on the Summer Corps website in a timely manner. Grantees may choose to receive their grant funds through an escrow account, DPD at its sole discretion may authorize up to three draws of funding from the escrow account to reimburse an applicant as work is completed on a project. Any fees associated with the use of an escrow account will be taken out of the grant award. Are startups or new businesses eligible? Yes, most startups can apply. Startup applicants will need to supply a detailed business plan and projections of the business's income and expenses for its first 36 months of operations as part of their application materials. The City of Chicago reserves the right to impose additional conditions for funding in connection with the startup business application. If you've only been in business for one to two years, Summer Corps requires tax returns 
and a projection of gross sales to equal three years of data. Please note that bars, taverns, hotels, and motel applicants must have held their applicable license and been in business for at least one calendar year. Am I eligible if I live outside of Chicago? The important consideration is where you have your business or property. To participate in the SPIF, your property must be in the city of Chicago as the funding source comes from the city's property taxes. If you live in another area, please call your city's planning, economic development, or community development department to see what other programs may be available to assist small businesses in your area. What if your building has both business and residential spaces? This program is primarily for business use, but there are mixed use exceptions. For these buildings, many envelope projects such as roofing, facade improvements, and tuck pointing can be eligible. Will there be enough, enough SPIF funds for all applicants? Each tax increment financing district that has the SPIF program authorized and it has limited funds reserved for the program. If demand for the funds is greater than the available funding supply, then a lottery will be conducted to determine the order in which each grant application may be accommodated. If any surplus funds become available, they will be allocated to waitlisted applicants. Applicants for property located in an invest Southwest corridor shall be given priority for funding and the lottery. Applicants for property located in a target corridor shall be second in priority for the funding and the lottery. The remaining applicants shall be provided funding if available and placed on the wait list, if applicable after the applicants in the invest Southwest corridors and the target corridors have been addressed. Is there SPIF funding available in my district? Every SPIF area has its own budget that the city refills if it has TIP funds available and if there's demonstrated need for the grant money. You can email SummerCore at our general inbox at SPIF at SummerCore.com to see if there are funds in your SPIF. We also maintain an interested list of funds list for funds, which you can also send an email to join. So when more funding becomes available or the city allocates more funding, we will let you know. The interested party list helps the city gauge demand for additional funding. What if I'm in a TIF and it is not a SPIF? Tax increment financing is the mechanism that funds the SPIF program. If you are in a TIF and it does not have SPIF, please contact your alderman. Again, thank you very much for spending time and learning about this program. Here we have our contact information for the SPIF team, as well as Nora Curry at the Department of Planning and Development. A copy of the presentation and a link to the video will be emailed to all attendees. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sylvia, for going through that. Uh, again, I just want to take a, a time just to remind everybody that if you have any questions, you could enter them into the Q&A box now and we can start rolling through them. Uh, I did want to, you know, Sylvia, the question I always start with that I think is the most helpful is what are the most common um, stumbling blocks for applicants for the SPIF program? So I would say the upfront financing Upfront financing and also design guidelines. So those are two of the most challenging. Um, so I would say to get started with that as soon as possible. It's okay if you do not have the financing available to you now, um, but you know you don't want to wait to the last minute because these types of things can be time consuming, reaching out, you know, underwriting. It can take a while. So I would say to get started with putting your financing in place. I always suggest that you reach out to your current lender since you've already established a relationship with them, but you can also reach out to the lenders that are available on our website who are familiar with our process. And also with the design guidelines, please take a look. Um, if you have any questions on that, you can always reach out to Summer Corps, but we like to have applicants prepared so that when they're submitted for approval, you know, there won't be any questions asked and we can just proceed at that. Great. And when we're talking about financing, we know this is a reimbursable grant. 
But could you talk a little bit about the phases that a project can go through if you maybe are not able to get all of the financing for the entire project at once? Sure, so we can break it out in phases depending on your circumstance. So for example, if you're an existing business and you, know, you just wanna have a few projects done at once, you may not have all the financing available to you upfront, so that's okay. We can break it out in up to three phases. So let's say, for example, a project that you have ongoing consists of a new storefront, a new roofing project, as well as, you know, let's say you're adding a new HVAC system. So you can get approved for all of those items. You can work at your own pace, do what needs to be done first, submit documentation as far as proof of payments, go to the city of Chicago, um, to Summer Core, actually directly to us. We can verify that the work has been completed, provide a reimbursement for that portion. You can then use that reimbursement to proceed with the next project in your, um, you know, whatever it is that you had approved. So up to three phases is what we can pay out. And um, I do want to mention for startups, we also allow one disbursement approximately halfway through the project. You know, we know it's not easy starting up a business and you know, it's not cheap either, especially with the increased cost these days of everything, basically. Um, so we allow at least 50% of the grant amount to be dispersed until the project is fully completed and the space is licensed. It's great. Or the business is licensed at that space, I should say. Thanks. And uh, one more question in terms of uh, financing, but, you know, on the application, it's a relatively quick application, only only three pages, but you do have to sort of list out uh, estimated costs. Can you talk about how uh, accurate these expected costs need to be on the application? So with those costs, I would suggest that you put in everything that you're looking to do. It's okay if you do not you know, do everything that's on your wish list, but there's always a possibility that we may need to have a lottery here. Um, so we understand that you may not have any idea what these projects cost. I would estimate on the higher end, you do not need to reach out to contractors at this time, but we do suggest that you estimate on the higher end for each line item that you're looking to complete, because you may be limited to funding if we have to conduct the lottery. Got it. Um, somebody is we as we covered earlier. Ground up construction is not eligible for SPIF, but if somebody uh, want had a ground up business they're trying to do, could they actually apply for SPIF but only request uh, SPIF eligible items to be reimbursed? If it's new construction, then we cannot cover it. Is this the situation? Is this something that's being built and then they want us to finish? Yeah, that was the building? question is if I, if I okay. need to build a building from the ground up, I, would I be able to use SPIF if, to ask for only the things that are covered, not framing, but more things later on in the process? No, that would still be considered new construction. So we would not cover those items. And I think it's important to clarify, we had a question here if an online business is eligible for this grant. So maybe we need to kind of go back to the basics about um, what we can actually use SPIF funding for. Okay, so SPIF can actually be used for permanent renovations only. So you do have to have an actual, you know, storefront in order for us to be able to provide a grant because it is for permanent renovations to the building itself. They can't be used for operating cost or capital or anything else. Um, and then, and somebody was asking for clarification in terms of financing. Can you use uh, non-institutional lenders? I think they're asking, can you go to somebody other than a bank to get your part of the financing for the project? Absolutely. If you can go to your mom, your brother, your sister, your cousin, the most important thing is that you have the financing available. You as the applicant are responsible for paying your contractor directly for all labor and materials. So if you can prove to us that you paid directly from either your personal or your business account, you know, we really don't question where the funding came from. It can come from a bank, come from, you know, your bank, a loan, construction loan. You know, as long as you can prove to us that you actually made the payments, that will suffice. Yeah, and I believe there are also uh, other nonprofit lenders that are also in the space similar to us that, that might be able to help. Um, 
And just to clarify, I, uh, I know that Nora spoke in the beginning about there being $60 million for SPIF, and that was over the three-year period. Uh, so that covers, so it's not just $60 million currently for just this application period. It's for the full three years and all the districts that are opening. Um, if you have on hand approximately how much uh, funding is available for this rollout in the Inglewood neighborhood. If you don't, we can try to follow up Ashley with you directly. I do, actually. It's $1.2 Hey, oh, there you go. Look at you, Sylvia. You already, and I should have, I should not have doubted. I don't know why I did. Uh, <laughs> um, so we, so we talked a little bit about how if you um, have possibly, if you've already used up all your SPIF dollars for previous projects, but you're interested in applying again, we talked about how there's a three-year waiting period. The question is, is a three-year waiting period for that actual property address or is it for the owner? So let's say that in between, you know, somebody actually took over the location. Can you speak to that a little bit? So it's actually based on the property itself. So if someone, let's say, received a grant of $50,000 two years ago, and now there's a new tenant here and they're looking to reapply, they would be eligible, but only for the difference of the $100,000. We do not do any transfers to new business or, you know, property owners, but they could reapply, but it's actually based on the property itself. Good to know. Um, we are now, now I think people are going to ask you these specific questions, Sylvia, so putting you back on the spot. Do you know how much um, funding is available for the Avalon South Shore this district, this period? You know what, that one I do not know off the top of my head. I'm thinking it's probably close to $400,000 in that area. Awesome. Appreciate it. And uh, and I know for this person that asked that question, feel free to follow up with an email to spiff at summercore.com and we can for sure send you the, the um, exact numbers if you like. Um, I guess then there's a question too, what if you own multiple businesses in multiple locations? Are there any limits in terms of how many applications that you can submit? Not necessarily, as long as they're within the SPIF district, they should be able to submit applications. And as long as you know they qualify as far as net worth and liquidity goes, this should be okay. There is a um, there is one rule that if you have two properties that are next to each other, they will be limited to one grant amount. So let's say you have two properties right next to each other and you're looking to use SPIF for both. It will count as $150,000 grant eligible for both properties. That's, that's great. I appreciate it. I know we had another question here about a specific amount of eligible available in a TIF. I'm just going to say if anybody has questions about how much is in the TIFs that are open this time around, just send us a send us an email at spiff at summercore.com and we'll make sure that we um, get those amounts for you. Um, and just as a reminder, if you missed part of this presentation, you will be getting an email with a link to the video to watch as well as a copy of this presentation. Um, so a question, uh, we talked a little bit about how, uh, while this is a non-competitive grant, we, it all is really develop, uh, depends on availability of money. So if somebody is put on a waiting list, what are the expectations of that person? Um, does there any kind of guidance you can give about how long it will get to that person? Um, and, and just sort of some of the things to weigh if you have a timeline yourself about opening uh, the business. Sure, so if you're placed on the wait list, Keep in mind that the waitlist is active for 24 months. So if within that time frame, either the city allocates additional funding or someone who was selected ahead of you is deemed to be not eligible, or if they fail to meet their deadlines, then that money will go to the next person who's on the waitlist there. And so anything that's completed before you actually get an approval from the city of Chicago, it will not be eligible. So if you can hold off, I would say hold off. From my experience, I've been working with the SWIFT program for nearly 17 years now. We very rarely had to dissolve wait lists for not having enough funding to cover everyone. So we do not have an exact time frame as to when we can reach your application. You know, it could be two months from now, it could be six months from now. We really just don't know what the outcome is going to be, how many people are on the wait list, you know, if all of the applicants that submit an application are going to be eligible. So kind of hard to pinpoint, but you can always follow up with Summer Corps and check in on the status. 
to see if you've bumped up a few people, you know, to get a better idea of where, where you stand. And I think we can also talk a little bit about what you can do before you get the letter in terms of permit and application, or excuse me, and um, actually getting drawings, architectural drawings, and how that works with the SPIF project, because those also can take time. Yes, very time consuming. So those are two of the items that, you know, for most projects, it's either architectural drawings and or permits though. So what you can do is you can get started with the architectural drawings. Those are two expenses that you can pay for upfront and can be reimbursed in the end once the project is complete. So you can move forward with obtaining architectural drawings for your work that needs to be done as well as submitting applications for permits so that you know once we get to your application, you can be ready to go. That's great advice. Um, could you uh, talk a little bit about uh, the lottery? Uh, if, in, if in the case that there's not enough funding available for all the applicants, um, because if there's enough funding available, everybody gets it as long as they're eligible. There isn't a, a question of whether or not they, um, and it's not a competitive grant, but if let's say there isn't enough money available, how are um, applications prioritized when it comes to the lottery and how does that work? Okay, so we do not have a you know process of selecting or prioritizing any businesses. We make it as fair as possible. So every application that's submitted within an open acceptance period is part of the lottery. So you know you can say there's winners and losers, Really, there's not. It's either you get funded, you can get partially funded, or you can be placed on the wait list. So what happens after the open acceptance period is we determine what the request is, compare that to the balance of funding that we have available. By ordinance, we have to assume that everyone is requesting the maximum grant amount. So with that assumption, if it's over the funding that we have available, that's where we come into play with the lottery. So all applicants are invited to the lottery. It will be via Zoom and it will be conducted in a way that we list every application on an Excel sheet and we use a randomizer that basically randomizes the order that the applications are gonna be processed in. So with that drawn order, we start processing the applications until we don't have any funding. So again, your project may be funded, partially funded or placed on the wait list. We usually notify the application, the applicants of their status within two to three weeks following the lottery. And uh, additional information is if you are unable to attend the lottery, we do post the results on the Summer Corps website within 24 hours of the lottery posting so you can uh, get an idea of where you are in the order. Um, I did want to uh, open up one last time just reminding anybody if you have any questions. Oh. I guess, and also just a note, Nora is a rock star from DPD and she actually put in the chat for everybody to see the funds available for each district in the rollout. So you don't have to uh, send an email. So that's gonna be 51st and Archer has 300,000, Avalon Park, South Shore, 250,000, Englewood, 1.2 million and Lawrence of Broadway, 2.4. So now you know sort of where all of those different districts are. Um, but I was going to say, if we don't have any other questions at this time, Sylvia, do you have anything else you'd like to add for the group? I do not. Thank you very much. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or visit our website for more information. And thank you for that information, Nora. Thanks, everybody. And again, just a reminder, you will be receiving an email with a copy of this PowerPoint, as well as the link to watch this video again on DPD's YouTube page. Thanks so much. Thank you.